Thank you all for, uh, some of you have already passed the, uh, the black folder down your pew, and that, that helps. I know you, you think to yourself when you fill those out that you know you're here, and God knows you're here, but it helps us to know uh, And as you fill those out. There's also in the pew, you'll see a blue card. If you'll take that and um, fill that out, those of you who are uh, new or ha- maybe you have questions about how to plug into the life and ministries of Perry United Methodist Church, you can do that with that blue card. Uh, or, or if you wish to, uh, to join the church or have a prayer concern that you'd like to lift up, uh, please uh, fill that out and you can put it in the, uh, uh, the offering this morning. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. We are safe and secure, O Lord, in your everlasting arms. Thank you, O Lord, for calling us as your church to be a beacon of light and love in a world in need of salvation, in need of peace and joy and hope. Help us, O Lord, in the ministries that uh, we participate in, that we shine your light, that others may know and find you. And uh, in all of this, may all of our giving go to your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God be in my head and in my understanding. God be in mine eyes and in my looking. God be in my mouth and in my speaking. God be in my heart and in my thinking. God be at my hand and my departing.
Please be seated. Thank you, Jane and the choir. God be in our heads and in our understanding. Um, be in my mouth and in my singing and be in my mouth and my speaking. <clears throat> May only the living word of Jesus Christ remain in our hearts after all that is said here. Um, last week, uh, Tom, Reverend Tom Carruth uh, reminded us of a ministry known as Seedbed, which is uh, out of uh, Wilmore, Kentucky, J.D. Walt, um, and, and beyond, not just in Kentucky. It's all over the world, actually, the writers. It's resources for uh, growing in discipleship and awakening. That's the word they use, awakening. Um, that in these resources from Seedbed, that there might be an awakening in our hearts and in our understanding. Uh, J.D. Walt is his uh, title, Reverend J.D. Walt is, he's a writer, but it is to be sower in chief, <laughs> sower in chief. Um, so I uh, wanted to share with you, I am, um, this will be a two part, uh, come back next week for part two. Uh, this is going to be a, a two part series on chapter 13 of Matthew. So um, it'll just get better. So whatever happens today, next week's going to be all, all the better. So um, just get ready for that. Um, but one thing I wanted to share with you is before I read verses 1 through 9, we need to kind of go into what a parable is and how different it might be um, from what we're used to. Uh, and... We're going to do that with the very words of Matthew. Matthew uh, shares uh, some scripture from Isaiah. So Matthew quotes Isaiah when it comes to parables and how important they are. Uh, any of you ever been to um, Jonesboro, Tennessee and uh, the storytelling festival or storytelling uh, capital? Is it Jonesboro? Yeah, yeah. It's big. It's a big deal. Um, and uh, telling stories is the way of the rabbi. Uh, Jesus is the rabbi and he is teaching. But he wants us to take these parables uh, as they are given to us. So I'm going to read the 10th through the 17th verse before I read the scripture for today. So I'm, I'm jumping down. I know this is out of order. But it's important for us as we get ready to hear the parable. Okay? Um, the disciples came to Jesus and asked... Why do you speak to the people in parables? Okay, so they have had questions for Jesus, and Jesus replies. Because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. He's talking about the crowds. Whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. This is why I speak to them in parables. And here he quotes uh, Isaiah 6. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this, people's, the people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their eyes and they have closed their uh, ears. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears, understand with their hearts and turn, repent, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. For truly, I tell you, many prophets and righteous people longed to see what you see, but did not see it. And to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Jesus is reminding them of the blessing they have uh, to have had the encounter that they have had with not just the storyteller, the parable teller who is Jesus, 
but the greatest story ever known right in front of them, telling them stories to remind them of the greatest story ever known. Matthew implies that, well, I'm getting some feedback here. Is that me? That may just be me. Um, Okay, Matthew uh, implies that what was true in Isaiah's time is repeated here in Jesus' time and in Jesus' mission. Uh, And unlike Mark, so this is also in Mark chapter 4. Remember, we've got the synoptic gospels. There's the the, the four gospels, right? But there are three of them that are similar, synoptic. Uh, They they are uh, sometimes twinsies or triplicies. uh, And they uh, share very common stories. And this story is also in Mark chapter 4, but there's... There's a difference here. Matthew, being the good um, as he has earlier in his gospel, he gives a beatitude. That's nice because parables can be pretty scary. And yet Matthew, in his heart of hearts, shares uh, this beatitude. Blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. And it explains that the prophets and the righteous long to see and hear what the disciples are privileged to see and hear. So, it is a privilege. Um, It is an opportunity. And it is a chance for folks to learn faithfully. I'll tell you, there's a great source of parables that many of you may know. And um, it's from a cartoon featuring um, an Australian cattle dog named Bluey and uh, Bingo and their mom, Chili, and their dad, Bandit. Um, They're short. They are um, lessons that are taught by way of story. Uh, So much so that... um, you, uh, there are so many different ways that we can learn from, um, I guess, this Australian uh, cartoon. But one of them is when Chili her, uh, tells her daughters, her dog daughters, is that how you say that? Um, Bluey and Bingo, how to listen. Put your ears on. Or in Australian, uh, I can't do an Australian accent, actually. <laughs> Put your ears on. Something like that. Anyway. Uh, and, and in that, they learn to listen and they learn to respect. Uh, there's so many ways that these parables um, are, are taught to us. And the one way that um, Christian history has said, and you'll see a, maybe a, um, or maybe it's already been up, the, uh, the icon of the sower uh, the icon of the sower, the sower of the seed. You see that that um, that he is on different types of turf. There is no astroturf, I don't think, in that time. But the uh, ancient um, Eastern Orthodox icons wanted you to go into this story with uh, this in front of you, so you can engage in the story and put your ears on. Um, so. Let's listen to this parable. The same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake, such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it. While all the people stood on the shore, then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seeds fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seeds fell on good soil where it produced a crop. A hundred, sixty or 30 times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. And then skipping down to the part after I had already read from verse 18, 
Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. Here's the translation. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because the word, because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to to someone who has heard the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding 160, 30 times what was sown. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of God endures forever. Thanks be to God. We, we know that there's four categories here. And um, some of you... During your life, you have been probably on all four of these at some point. On the path, those that were sown on the path, those seeds, they are those that hear the word of God's reign but do not understand it. It is the seed that does not germinate. I think of uh, last week's sermon, uh, Tom uh, did a wonderful job uh, with J.D. Walt's bar graphs, and I know y'all were like, bar graphs in a sermon, um, and not just one, two. This is two weeks in a row I'm referring to these. Um, But the bar graphs have stops, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Those were the prevenient and justifying grace. And then stops seven, eight, nine, and ten were the sanctifying grace. Remember the call to be holy. Well, we have three types of soil that make up those early stops. Um, on the path, on the rocky ground, among thorns. But then the one that gets us into the holiness of God is the good soil. The seed gives fruit abundant and even proportions. Now, agrarian historians say that when, when, you, um, when you share seed like this, you see the, uh, the icon the seed is here, and the seed is thrown, right? It's thrown uh, indiscriminately on all kinds of soil. And that is called broad casting. You're casting it over a broad area. You all know what broadcasting means. It's, it's a term used in radio. Um, some of you know um, the seeds from the sower sermonettes from East Georgia, Michael Guido. Um, who used to, uh, in Metter, uh, be a, 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 had a, a televangelist uh, chance to share, and he always called it Seeds of the Sower. And he was, um, in 2007, he retired. In 2009, he passed away. But they talked about uh, Michael Guido being this um, wonderful servant to East Georgia. And that in um, 1943, he had come back from Moody Bible Institute, and they were in a car wreck in the 40s. And when, uh, when they were in the car wreck, they were in East Georgia near Metter, and they found out there was, there was no Christian radio. There was no uh, chance to evangelize on the radio. So um, that was in 1957. They started a ministry, Guido Evangelistic association. And there for years, uh, the sower, Michael Guido, continued to share uh, over, the, over, the, uh, inter- over the radio, broad casting, wherever the seeds might fall, wherever and whomever they might reach. Um, he said, uh, before he died, he frequently told supporters that whatever he, whenever he needed anything, he would ask the Lord for it, and God would supply his every need. Uh, and then the Metter advertiser said that um, 
that he w said that he ha was in need of nothing. He had a very wealthy father. <laughs> um, he was talking about God, right? He was talking about the source of his um, sowing, the one who would sow. But a reminder that on all of the broadcasts, it is a reminder to listen, to put your ears on. In the Boy Scouts, we used to do this which was a sign we would do this. It meant be quiet, stop doing whatever you're doing. Um, and um, it may be tin hut or something like that in other traditions. Um, sometimes you rowdy Methodists, in order to get your attention before a potluck, we say, the Lord be with you. And then what do you respond? And also with you, right? And that will... I'm not call yeah, you are kind of rowdy sometimes at um, potlucks. Uh, but but it, it gets our attention, attention. It helps us to get our ears on. And the soil that um, Jesus wants us to be in, the good soil, is the one that we will listen to, we will understand, we will find um, strength in the midst of uh, barrenness. We will find uh, growth where many would not. Um, and our, our calling is to not find our place uh, in the wrong places. And we're going to talk about this more with the parable of the seeds and the weeds. The seeds and the weeds, which is next week. There are seven parables in Matthew 13. We are not covering all of them. Um, but, but next week there is more to come. Uh, but my prayer for you is that this week you will find that good soil and that you will broadcast and you will, you will know uh, that, that God is blessing you and giving you life in a soil that grows. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for the ways in which the sower uh, reminds us. We, we admit to you that we have been on rocky ground. We have been uh, on the path where uh, the birds would, uh, th th that it would be a place where we would uh, not grow. We have also been uh, in, the, in the weeds, literally. And uh, we, we pray that we would be, um, by your love, moved uh, and find that good soil, uh, that we would grow in our knowledge and our understanding of you now and forever. Amen. Our uh, hymn of preparation is, um, or I'm sorry, our hymn of commitment. We've already done our hymn of preparation. Do y'all want to get prepared some more? Uh, we're going to make a commitment, and we're going to be sent forth by God's blessing. It's number 664. Uh, the altar is open if any of you wish to come and pray. Uh, again, sent forth by God's blessing. Let's stand and sing together.